Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. And yes, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com, is here today. I am. And Can I, you hear me, though? Yeah, he got a new cable, and it appears to be working fine. Mm-hmm. Which is odd, because uh, yesterday you plugged the old cable, Ed Mike, into a different device, and it worked. It was working the whole time. I'm concerned that the tie line might be a little loose in the back, but uh, like I told you, the mic was working fine, so hopefully it's not the tie line because that would be a lot of money. Bro, if this thing if this thing breaks again, it's the tie line. I don't want to deal with this. What has been going on with all of these technical issues over the last like couple of days here? What in the world is happening? Well, should I make a list? Should I make a list of your uh, deal didn't work yesterday? Then Granny's didn't work. Which, by the way, when I went over there last night, I literally unplugged the internet cable and plugged it back in, and then it worked again. And then we had no audio and no video for the first uh, portion of this show. But you know what happens, everybody? When, When stuff goes wrong, you just keep going. And here we are live with a lot to talk about. We are celebrating National Scissoring Day today. With $35 cameos at Brian Alvarez. Or maybe it's F4W Online. You can find me on Cameo. I'm a big shot on Cameo, so it shouldn't be hard to find. But grab yours today along with everybody else who has uh, jumped in for uh, jumped in for a National Scissoring Day cameo. You sure they didn't slide into the scissor? Which, of course, leads us to the Dynamite Show tonight, where the acclaimed and Billy Gunn will be celebrating National Scissoring Day. And... We'll see what happens tonight, but Swerve pretty much told us on Rampage that they're going to ruin National Scissoring Day, which will generate an exceptional amount of heat. But uh, we'll see how that goes tonight. The big show. we got eight matches. we got eight segments, most of which, in fact, are matches. Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia versus Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. Which we'll see what happens tonight, but it appears to be a culmination of of many storylines. The storyline of Daniel Garcia having Brian Danielson as his idol, yet he was recruited by Chris Jericho and Jericho's longtime Jericho Appreciation Society friend, Sammy Guevara. Will we have the horseman beatdown tonight of Brian Danielson? Will Daniel Garcia leave the Jericho Appreciation Society with the understanding that he is, in fact, a pro wrestler and not a sports entertainer? We will find out tonight. Wardlow defends the TNT title against the returning Brian Cage. In the opening match, MJF. We'll be taking on Wheeler, Utah, after the wild brawl that they had last week. Hangman Page faces Roosh, stemming from them being the final two in that recent battle royal and and what has happened since Tony Storm, Athena, Willow Nightingale versus Jamie Hayter, Serena Deeb, and Penelope Ford. Darby Allen will be facing Jay Lethal. Luchasaurus will be in action which will almost certainly involve the return of the Jungle Boy after they told him, don't you dare show up. This is the third year anniversary of Dynamite, and it is expected to be a a pretty stacked show when all is said and done. Are you excited, Mike? I'm excited. I'm excited to see if Sammy Guevara even makes it out of the locker room for his upcoming match here with uh with daniel garcia with all that nonsense i'm sure that you talked about yesterday with andrade and all that sort of stuff so certainly hasn't been another newsworthy week leading into the show for aew so uh yeah brian cage is he uh part of still of tully blanchard enterprises or prince nana's embassy is that still a thing that's still going on Guess we'll find out. Not a clue, do you? Not a clue. Yes, we'll find out. By the way, if you've been following the uh, Sammy Guevara Andrade stuff on Twitter, it, the back and forth came to an abrupt halt yesterday. <laughs> probably was a good idea. And is it probably? Uh, I shouldn't say probably. Is it absolutely should have? Yes. So. Although you know, unfortunately, he had to take it down, and that was the right thing to no, do. No, it's up. But no, well, no, no, no. I, I meant the. 
tweet by Ricky Starks where he just kind of exasperatedly said, you know, can my coworkers just shut the F up? Well, and then he took that down, but there's he a lot of there's a lot right. of people thinking those things right yes. now. <laughs> yes, AEW. yes, they are. <laughs> it seems to me it seems to me. I mean, this is just common sense. It, there should be a happy medium. Like you've got the the AEW side where every now and then something like this happens, just absolute complete madness on Twitter. And then you've got the WWE side where I mean, you got to tweet in character and it's very very frowned upon to do even step a little bit out of bounds. It seems like there should be like a a middle ground where you're free to tweet to who whom you want and about what you want, but also to be professional and not necessarily be airing dirty laundry online and maybe someday we'll get to that balance wwe has hired a director of long-term creative what's so funny the 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 term and i know i'm old but i can just think of all the older guys who've been in the business who are going oh a booker? <laughs> well, no, it's a I little mean, it's different. Just, it's a little I, different. I know it is. I know it is. What it's this just is. the concept of this is interesting. No, this concept is fantastic. They had a guy oh, God. who I yes. forgot his name, but he passed away, and I apologize. Someone will throw it out right here. But in about 2000, 2001, he had this job in WWE of essentially being responsible for trying to keep all of the storylines like he had a flow chart and he, he had was this person's a relationship with this continuity Con- editor. Exactly. That's what they call and, those and in, in the he, business. They raved about Chris Kresge. People raved about him. And if you watch the show back then, it was so much better with somebody whose job was to make sure, well, this person likes this person, this person had this and then that's that is what really every pro wrestling company could use. And they've hired Rob Fee, who is a horror writer for Marvel. He has penned comics for Spider-Man, Daredevil, The Avengers, head writer on multiple Disney shows, including 100 episodes of Disney XD's top-rated series, Player Select. And here's, here's, by the way, one of the keys to this. When you had Vince in charge, I don't care who you hired over the last 15 years or so. It ain't going to make one bit of difference. The guy's got his job, he's going to do his best, and Vince is going to do whatever he wants. If Triple H is willing to, like, hire a guy to do a job and let him do his job, bro, there's nothing better for the creative in this company than to hire a guy who is a director of long-term creative. And on top of that, I've heard from a few people that know Rob Fee. And you know what they said about Rob Fee? He's a good bloke. So I don't know anything about him, but got good reviews from people I've heard from. So we'll see how it goes as the director of long-term creative. Very bullish on this idea. I like it. I guess in a company that size, you can justify it the same way that they justify having 25 million writers as well. It's just where they're at and how they run their business. So I'm not going to crap on it or anything, but it is... Somewhat amusing that, you know, your booker, your head of creative, whatever you want to call them. Again, I know it's a big company and there's a lot of things going on at one time, but that shouldn't be something that should be so difficult. You bring in somebody from the outside, although I know part of what he is doing. I know part of what he is doing is also being creative and actually adding to the creative, not just being a check and balance guy on things that have happened in the past. If he's the one that's been so involved in getting this white rabbit thing off the ground and wanting to do a film with Bray Wyatt the last time around when he was there. I know you guys have PTSD. It's okay. Lenny here says the company's chewed up and spat out a ton of good blokes. You're right. They did. They did. When Vince was in charge. I realize it's only been a little while, but how many good blokes have been chewed up and spit out with Hunter in charge? I can't think of one. And they went public the last time. So I'm not saying it ain't going to happen. What I'm saying is we deserve to give this a chance till good blokes are spit out and chewed up by Hunter. Back in a moment with more news, Observer Live. There's a lot of criticism about professional wrestling. You all right over there? What's going on with you? There's up with the mic. Sorry. No, what do you need so much water for today? It's coffee. Put that away! 
Crying out loud, it's nighttime. You're not going to be able to sleep. Will you have to have another drink right now? God help me. Now, where was I? People didn't like this so much, I hear. I can't even remember what I was angry about. I got, I got a question. Is anyone else thirsty? How did I not see I'm that? Just, I just, uh, just, uh, you absolute... God, I hate everybody on this show. It's not an issue of whether the listeners can hear it. I don't care about you. It's about me. Sociopath. God. Sheesh. Me? Yeah. Now my wife is texting me, Craig. I hope you're happy about that. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.